Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. I always wanted to ask somebody this. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, you uh, are one of the best-known names in the world, both you and Yoko. And the question is, is there anybody you've ever wanted to meet that you've never been able to meet? Well, I mean, some of them I met this time, which was A.B. and Anita mm -hmm. and Jerry Rubin. Andy Wall and Zappa. Mm -hmm. In the space of three days, I met all them, and I've been dying to meet them all for over, over a year. Is there year anybody more. left? <laughs> uh, let me think. Chairman Mao. Uh huh. I'd love to see him. You're also Andy, you know, you remember that you were surprised that he's still so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was another image shock, you know. I, I must be a dummy, you know, but. Have you ever been dumbfounded by meeting somebody? I mean, uh, by their presence? Uh, I quite often am when I first meet them, you know. And when I first met Dylan, I was pretty dumbfounded, you know. That was a few years back in New York. And, uh -huh. and I'm pretty much a, a sort of fan type myself, in a way, you know. I mean, I never went uh, collecting people's autographs or any of that jive. But, but I really, if I dig somebody, I really dig them, you know. And the only time we collected autographs is you remember oh, yeah. we were in a restaurant in London and uh, Ingrid Bergman was there and I always admired her acting, you know. So I just went up and said, could I have an autograph? My please? husband yeah. and I admired you greatly. <laughs> it was a very nice. sort of nerve-wracking experience, you know, that I was on the other side, you know, just to do that. <laughs> How long are you in New York for this time around? I reckon we're here for... Uh, I'm hoping to extend my visa, but we're, we're, we've got until Tuesday, so hello, I'm off the mic, yeah, we've got until Tuesday so far. But I might go down to the west coast to, to uh, do some business there. Mm -hmm. Am I on? Is it all right? Yeah, I'm how, do you, how do you feel about a time in your life where uh, if you wore green shoes, the whole world started wearing green shoes? Well, I, you know, it's sort of... If you shaved your head bald, the whole world started shaving its head bald. Uh, well, it's, it still happens in a way. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I was off mic, folks. Mm -hmm. Engineer was freaking. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I chopped all my hair off last December, and there was a lot of chopped heads started appearing, so... <laughs> I still have the old pelvis, you know. <laughs> but it's, it is amazing, you know. <laughs> Uh, we used to sort of sit when we were with the Beatles. Did you ever sit up late think, at night saying, what should we do yeah, next? Yeah, right, right, almost, you know, we think, yeah. you know, hey, this will, this will get, <laughs> see if they all wear this, you know. Yeah, but these days we don't think there is so no, much to like, We yeah. sort of got, you know, we forget about it. I mean, you have to forget about yeah. it a little to live, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. to do things. The, uh, because I, I, would th I just think that whole thing must, uh, if, if you, um, you've probably been asked this many times, if you had it to do over again, would you? Uh, well, you know, it's a, it's a hard question to answer. I don't regret anything I've done, really, except for maybe hurting other people or something like that, you know. I wouldn't have missed any of it. I mean, I, I saw Veronica Lake saying it, uh, and it was very sad to see it on TV once, you know. She was telling the story of how she was sort of, you know, treated like a, I don't know, some kind of object, you know, in Hollywood in the old days. But she looked very sad. And I was trying to say, well, what a great education it was, you know, for those people that really got treated like muck in Hollywood in the old days. But I think I escaped before it was too late, you know. So I didn't sort of spend my life in that scene. I only had a few years of it. But the, the scene is sort of more regrettable, the side of it is more regrettable. So I don't really regret anything. Because yeah. the thing that, that I always said about uh, about the Beatles when the, when the phenomenon was going on that I never saw four people be thrusted uh, that were thrusted into something like that who handled it better and then it turns out now and as the stories come out yeah. that it wasn't handled that well I mean that mentally you all kind of suffered in certain ways Oh sure we're I mean that's human Yeah right human. but I was I was amazed at the time at least the impression was given that you were you were handling it beautifully you know that uh, well, we were always pretty aware of what, what our effect was on people. I mean, you learn about, you know, audience reaction or something, uh, you know, in your early days of playing, and you either get to be able to play an audience or the public, or you don't. So we were always pretty aware, in a way, of what what we were doing, although it was pretty hard to keep up when you were sort of going at 2,000 miles an hour. Sometimes you got dizzy, you know. But there wasn't often when you... You know, we usually just hung together somehow, you know? and there would always be somebody to lean on when there's four of you. You know, yes. there'd always be somebody that would be together enough to sort of pull you through 
different phases of it. I think they handle it pretty well, actually. I mean, it's it's not like they didn't handle it well. I think they handle it and they managed it pretty well. It's just that they weren't satisfied with, you know, just that, which is pretty amazing. I think it's good, you know, that they weren't satisfied with it. Yeah. Um. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, oh, I'm yes, at an sir. impasse. Here. Not awake to <laughs> I mean, are there questions, uh, you know, you've been interviewed time and time again. Are there questions you've ever wanted to be asked that nobody asks you? No. I can never, well, never think of people asking me, no. I have to wait to think that. I, if there is a question, I wouldn't know at this time of day. Mm. <coughs> you know, I just happen to clue, you know. Let's play a record. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do is take some calls, if you don't mind. Yeah, okay, talk to some sure. people. Uh, yeah. Put on those earphones. Oh, remember. Just happen to have our earphones with us. Christmas record. I thought we wanted uh, to How do you do it? Oh, Just one like that. Yeah. Some Just put it on. Yoko? Yoko? There's a pair, pair there for you. Hey. And, uh... You can do it. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I forgot it. Have you got a pair? We're yeah, all I'm tangled just... up in all kinds of stuff. So. Uh, I'm coming. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, uh, Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Hello, John. Yeah, hello. Right, uh, first, let's get the compliments out of the way. You know, you're great and all that, right? So are you. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, you know uh, your solo album, the one with God on it? Now? Yes. Now, uh, when Yoko released her solo album, were the covers exactly the same? What was the reason for that? Uh, the covers weren't exactly the same. I know. Like, one you were leaning against the tree and the other she was leaning against the tree. Well, because, uh, in a way, you know, the albums were very similar. Although, you know, in a way, of course, they weren't. As connection. Yoke, if you play Yoko's album track for track alongside mine, the sort of the tracks uh, tell the same story, just two artists telling it differently. And also sometimes it's like a dialogue, you know, when he say mother and I'm saying why, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So and we just wanted to be together, you know, even though we weren't putting out the album together, we yeah, wanted no, to be together. Of my friends like bought that album by mistake. Oh, well, that's very good. Maybe you learned something. Could you conceivably good. play the two albums at the same time? Ah, that would be great. If you play at the same time, it's because Paul is dead now. I'm missing, right? <laughs> well, see, we didn't plan it that way, but, you know, it was really weird because when he's saying, my mommy's dead, I'm saying, don't worry, you know. Right, it was a really moving album. Yeah, you see, but if you really were sort of awake when he bought it, you would have seen it on the backside, there was a chick. Right, there's a picture of you when you were a kid. Yeah, right. It was me morning. <laughs> <laughs> I just fell, you see. Well, I bought it early in the morning and I wasn't too awake. Ah, well, I mean, well, I hope you dug Yoko's album, you see, because yeah, right. I hope people uh, are into it. What did you think of McCartney's new album? Uh, well, I thought his other one was better, personally. Really? Yeah, I, I did like uh, the th thing about three legs. That was, but that, some of it I didn't dig at all. What did you think of Smile Away? Uh, I don't remember that. It wasn't bad. Oh, okay. And uh, what kind of guitar do you use? Acoustic? Uh, acoustic? I've got a lot, you see. I use a Martin, uh, and uh, I think I've got a Gibson. I've also got a Yamaha. You know, I mean, I've, over the years, I've picked up many kinds. Right. But the, the guitar I play in best at the moment is some old d Dobro. I mean, every musician in the rock scene's got one. <laughs> I picked one up in L.A. last year, and it's a, a white one. You can really howl on it. That's the one I'm using on Yoko's album, where it sounds like her voice. Right, and who are some of the uh, artists out now that you really dig? Uh, well, you have to give me a second, though, because people always ask me that, and I, I can't remember, and then when I get home, I can think of all sorts of people. That I, uh, you I just saw a Sly in the Family Stone on TV. I thought he was great. I love Zappa. Right. That's uh, where you went to Wisconsin. Yeah, well, yeah, we, Yoko and I performed it in the other night. It was beautiful. Mm. Would uh, you say your head is basically the same place as it was, like, when Rolling Stone interview was done? Uh, well, let's say, um, well, uh, I'm just, I'm nearly finished an album now, and it's, although it's it's still me, it's very unlike the last album, whereas I'm just sort of a bit happier, you know. Uh, last time I was sort of, uh, I've just been through that therapy, etc., etc., and I was full of, uh, I don't know, it's almost resentment, not resentment, but I was full of the past, you know, and it was all coming out of my mouth. But now I'm sort of uh, just a bit more relaxed about it all, you know. Mm. Did any of the other Beatles play on your album? Because there was reports in Rolling Stones that you... Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I don't... I'm not sure whether Ringo played on one track. I missed... Uh, but I have a lot of different people playing on the album this time. But George plays on about four or five of the tracks. Oh. And he does some mother solos, especially on one of them. Does Phil Spector produce it? Or uh, yeah, well, Phil sp produces it with Yoko and I. Uh, so as uh, We Don't Go... 
overboard and he doesn't go overboard, you know, we get a nice balance between the three of us. You know, I found it really amazing, like the difference between your album and Harrison's album, being that, you know, Spectre had to hand them both of them. Well then, if you listen to my album and Yoko's album, you'll see where mine and Yoko's influence, and we've used what I consider the best of Spectre. Yeah, well, it sort of sounded like, you know, like, Phil Spectre has a habit of overproducing. Well, uh, you know, not to, simple, not to sort like of... Hand up or something. Well, you know, I'm different from from George. That, that, and I think uh, both George and Phil have a ten, tendency to go into the clouds with it. You know, mm -hmm. George is producing and him with uh, uh, in production as well. But, I mean, that's the way they dig it, you know. I mean, they, they just go tripping off with all that millions of things happening. Right. I like a simple... You wrote in my life. You were uh, McCartney. What? Who wrote In My Life? I wrote In My Life, yeah. That's a beautiful song. Oh, thank you. Okay, um... Thank you for calling. That's about it. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. My guests are uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono, or in this days of women's lib, Yoko Ono and John Lennon. What? Thank you. Uh, oh, all right. uh, good morning, folks. Uh, have you had your breakfast yet? Yoko, how do you feel about women's lib? Well, I'm just making a film about uh, all about female lib, you know? Yeah. I'm very concerned about it. Uh, about three years ago, uh, I said in the magazine called Nova that woman is the nigger of the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I always felt that way. And I, luckily, I have a husband who's very understanding about the subject. Shut up, you bitch! <laughs> you know, like he's really into it, too, you know? Yeah. And we kid around, you know? It's really nice. <laughs> You know, you... That's one thing that's lacking about females. I know, I know the issue, and you know, I sympathize with them. But there's a certain sense of humor that's lacking. You know, of course, because it's such an urgent issue, and I don't blame them. But you know, well, sometimes, uh, sometimes I think with any issue, you go. Some people um, get to a point where they almost you can you can take something to a point of being obsession. valid, and yeah, then yeah. to a point of obsession, and then to a point of ridiculousness. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we have to. We women have to make men feel easy too you know they have to relax too you know we can't just sort of scare them and sort of push them in a corner you have to say well listen it's going to be all right the fact that we're going to get some rights is not going to hurt you we can live together you know there's yeah. room for everybody you know and it, it's no way to just kill them you know what i mean like killing men is not going to help you know do you ever get assailed though by women's lib because you are so tied to your husband? You two are almost no, one. No. It's almost come to that I think point. They're, they're pretty aware of the fact that I am pretty free and independent uh, with my husband's help. You know, but you know what I mean. Like I'm not really uh, <laughs> in the kitchen, you know, all the time. Or you know, we have a complete fifty-fifty relationship. Do you take out the garbage? We, we don't have Neither garbage. You don't have that scene in England. You just throw it out mm -hmm. the kitchen window and a man takes it away. <laughs> yeah, like I'm yeah. working full time on my own work, which is good, and together, you know, and I still believe in a peace thing too. And I mean, I had those. to learn it, you know. I mean, let's face it, I didn't. I wasn't a natural. No, he's come from the equality. Of, I mean, uh, I come from a class of people that. Uh, I don't consider women to be anything but sort of a lay and something that does the dishes. Yeah. But um, being uh, quite intelligent, I soon picked up the... <laughs> Quickly the, adapted to the situation. Adapted to the, the pressure of my <laughs> wife. Yeah. Pressure. Did, did he adapt to it readily <laughs> or... <laughs> oh, you know. Well, did, did he adapt to it readily or did he uh, did it take yes, some yes, working? Yes, he quickly understood, you know, because uh, I, you know, I just never, it never occurred to me that there was still a world where, you know, male are male, you know, that male chauvinist attitude, you know. Yeah. Come on, you and had then, nothing uh, but that in the art world. Oh, that's what are you true, right, about? right. In the art the world, world it, yeah. yeah. There's, there's an interesting case where they, where they took uh, a female artist and they took a male artist and they put their paintings up. Mm. And uh, they switched the names, uh -huh. and then asked people which painting they liked the best. Oh yeah. And uh, they all took the males, yeah. and then they switched the names again and again. They took the other painting because yeah. it had a male name. Well, on. I'll tell you how uh, anybody, any guys that are interested in trying to give the the woman what they they want, or even that give is a bit condescending, but allow. Even that's bad. <laughs> but allowing whatever. is very, very difficult. Just imagine you? that Just it's your best it. friend, only a guy. You know. Only a woman, right. No, imagine your wife is the, the, the guy, the best friend you had, or the, the guy you work with. And imagine what he'd say if you expected that from him. I used to, whenever 
I had to, came in, into any confrontation with Yoko about or something like that. I said, well, imagine if I said that, if I expected that from George or Paul yeah. or something, or Ringo. Well, he imagine if I expected them to go and fetch the, or, you know, say this or... Or for tea or, you know... Think, you know, mm. they'd, they'd say, what the, you know, who do you think you are, you know, drop dead. Yeah. <laughs> so then if you imagine it, it, you know, give them that same right, that you, how you treat your friend, a uh, male friend, you soon pick it up, you know. Mm. You realise you just take them for granted, man. Yeah. Well, he's adapted himself to all sorts of strange, strange situations, yes, you know, very quick, and that's what he did. Of course, See, yeah. Another thing so funny is that, <laughs> yes, dear, yes, dear. <laughs> uh, you know, when I had my first gallery show in New York, you know, yeah. and this critic came, I didn't know he was a critic, but he was sort of walking around from art news, you know, and uh, he's come to me, and you <coughs> see, because he was such a... Uh, you know, it was a show that nobody's come, really. It was in the midsummer and everything. And I was the only one who was in the gallery, sort of, you know, like I was like a secretary, you know, sitting there like a secretary because there was nobody else. And he's come to me. He thought I was a secretary. He said, uh, excuse me, but uh, uh, do you know if Yoko is a man or woman? <laughs> you know, it was my one, one woman show, you know. So I said, well, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. But, you know, that's the attitude they have. I think he meant as a compliment and says he thought it's a good, good work, and uh, so maybe it's, man, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I thought we'd uh, do here is uh, you were suggesting that the two albums fit together. So what yeah. we thought we'd do is we'd play two tracks together. Oh, that's beautiful. That's great. Well, you chose two tracks, right? Well, yeah. I think, you know, My Mommy's Dead is a quiet piece. If you start with that and then end with Don't Worry, you'll see what it's like. Bring it on top of it. Bring it on top of it, yeah. Uh, you know, don't worry what is on the tail of my LP. It's like a loop on the very yeah. end of it, after the last track almost, don't worry. Yeah, so what should we do? Start worry. start with oh, Johns and then bring dead, in yeah. the other yeah, one on right, top right. of it. Right, and let's see what happens. Okay, it's WPLJ in New York. So that should be easy. Okay, let's try it. Actually, uh, the rest of it's dogs barking. Yes, I think that's more subtle, you know, just that one don't worry, and dogs barking like crazy. Well, if you say mommy, my mommy's dead, you know. What, what, do you, what, what other tracks would you say that if people are at home they should throw together, would make a good combination? Well, I think uh, when he starts to shout in uh, Mother, the first track, yeah. you put Why on, it would be great. The end yeah. of Mother yeah. and the beginning of Why. Yeah. Huh. yeah. The end of Mother and the beginning of Why. Let's try that. Yeah. Let's try that. Um, this, this, this Actually, we've never done this, you know. It's just that the tracks matched each other. Yeah, you saw it. The Penguin. This, yeah. this was never released here, right? And I don't know who released the paperback edition of, of the books in uh, America. This is a, an English one. They just re-released it, see. You, so it's actually three works that you had? No, there's two books. Spaniard in the Works. And In His Own Right. And uh, they were both put into paperback. But they make a better job of it in England. They sort of, you know, over here it was like a sort of toilet paper. <laughs> I don't know who put it out, actually. Oh, and so this is a combination of the two? Yeah, right. Why, uh, why haven't you written any more books? I just never got into it or never really took the time to do it. See, I used to do a lot of it while on tour, you know, sitting in hotels and things like that. And I don't get that kind of time now. But Yoko and I are... are going to make a movie. She's done a book called Grapefruit, and we're going to make a movie in his own grapefruit. And I'll sort of direct the bits that are to do with my book, oh, mainly, and she'll do the bits that are from Grapefruit. grapefruit. How old is Grapefruit? It's, you wrote it quite a few years ago, didn't you? Uh, 1964. It was published in 1964, and it was written, you know, since 1950-something. I've got, you know, but, uh, but, you see, I read it, uh, like, two months ago, and it still works in a way, you know. So in those days, people just didn't understand the idea, and uh, you know, I feel pretty bitter about that. You know? Do you look back at old works and and somehow say, hey, that was good? 
Or all do you that. say here that was horrendous? It depends what yeah. old work you're looking back on. Uh, the, the, the grapefruit's just coming out again in paperback in England in July, and I think it's coming out in paperback here, maybe around hopefully, Christmas, yeah. hopefully. Oh. Simon you used to get off here. Hence. Good morning. Okay. There's traffic okay? in these yeah. right in his. Yeah. <laughs> While they're doing that, uh, if the action goes through, will Apple still exist or will it be oh, completely sure. this dissolved? Is, this is not to do with Apple. This is to do with, uh, I don't know how much I can say about it. This is to do with Northern Songs and Mac Len, which are both to do with the publishing of Paul and Mine's song. I think it has something to do with Paul and Linda, Linda writing the things. So I'm not sure, you know. Uh -huh. I, I think uh, it's uh, because Paul and I yeah. own Mac Len between us, most of it anyway, Apple only owns a bit of it. But that Apple jazz, the receiver thing, the receiver has not received Apple, he's re received the Beatles partnership, or whatever it's called, which is 5% of Apple. Yeah, no, 5% of the Beatles used to be one whole thing, yeah. and they sold 80% to Apple, as if Apple was a separate company. I see. And the 5% remaining is what the receiver is in charge of, which really all it did was, like, uh, pay for your auntie's flowers or get the window pane <laughs> fixed, so that's what he's doing. <laughs> what have each of you done in, in, your, in, your, in your creative life that after you did it, you said, wow, that's it, man, I, I can't top that? Oh, never. You never had that feeling. You never had that no. feeling. Did you ever have anything where you said, I'm happy that I did that in my lifetime, that I was able to create that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I used to get that about whatever I'm doing at the moment. I mean, I never get that sort of overwhelmed by it. I was, uh, I was pleased with the last album I did. I mean, I'm not going to have that much sort of emotion or insight laid down on an album every, every time I put on an album, you know. I mean, that was one in ten, probably. It was one of the most totally honest albums. Well, that's a, you know, I'm probably not going to go through exactly that kind of experience again. I mean, unless I suddenly see myself anew in four or five years or something, you know. But uh, well, I won't be doing that every week. John's last album, I thought, you know, it was pretty something else. And I thought it would be very hard for him to top it, you know. But yeah. he's immediately made another album now that's... No, well, the thing I thought was interesting was the fact that everybody for years had spent time trying to figure out what Beatle lyrics meant. I mean, the, the constant oh, yeah. tearing yeah. apart of them and trying to figure out. What, and this album, they, they couldn't possibly do that. It was all right out there in but the open. I read some. I don't know whether it was by Weberman. I read something the other day where the, he was, somebody was writing about the last album I made and made, it seemed to think it was all about Dylan or something. And they had all incredible stories about the, the lyrics. That was Weberman. Well, it's nothing to do with it. It's about me. You know? <laughs> and then I had this guy called Claudio who'd been sending telegrams for nine months to England saying, I'm coming, I'm coming, and I only have to look in your eyes and then I'll know. So last week he turned up at the house, you know, and he looked in my eyes and he didn't get any answer. And he, he thought the whole thing was about him. And I said, no, it's about me. And I said, it might, you know, <laughs> it might sort of strike a corresponding chord in, in your experience too, because we all have fairly similar experiences. But it's basically about me, and if it's not about me, then it's about Yoko and me. Mm, you know, it's a dialogue, so in a way, too. I said, you better get on and live your own life, you know. I mean, you're wasting your time trying to live mine. Okay, I think we got those two tracks queued up now, okay? <laughs> Start with one, and then we'll uh, <coughs> do the other over it, okay? Okay. <laughs> I think uh, I think both albums will sell equally well now as people go out and buy two phonographs yeah. and uh, yeah, they do really fit. Beautiful. They definitely. You know what? Well, what I found out in doing a music show is that they segue beautifully. Oh yeah. That almost any track from your album and a track from your album just segue perfectly. Well, they were being recorded almost simultaneously. And I'd, I'd just finish a track and I'd, I'd be uh, like on that Y, the first track of Yoko's. I'd just be gigging in the studio with the musicians, with Klaus and Ringo. It was. And then Yoko would just run in from the control room where she'd been sort of A and R in me or whatever, and join in. You see, so it'd be the sort of we'd almost have the same tone, it would be same almost emotion, same yeah. emotion yeah. would carry on right away. So we did. I did a track, and she did a track right after, like that all the time. Does your voice ever give out on you, Yoko? When you're doing those tracks? It gave out the other night after film. Oh, yeah, well, look, you see, my voice is sort of funny now, right? Yeah. But you see, the thing is, uh, when an opera singer or something, when they're in bad condition or something, they think, well, they can't sing, you know, so when they get 40, they, you know, they can't sing or something. But you see, I discovered that any sound that comes out of your body is interesting, you know? Mm -hmm. So even when my voice is like this, 
there's a way of singing that sort of, you know, because what you're doing is to communicate, you know, your emotion. You know, and, and it's uh, when an opera singer or something tries to always uh, best foot forward or something, it's ridiculous. We're dealing with human emotions, so sometimes it's an uh, ugly emotion or, you know, you know, but ugly right. beauty and that, you know. It's all right, anything is beautiful, you know. But your voice has... Uh, yeah, but your voice does give out on you sometimes when you do these... Yeah, it's but nice. I mean, whatever, the, the voice that g gave out is beautiful, um, beautiful meaning, you know, like, it conveys too. You know, it communicates too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even if when it's like this, you can say, ah, you know, yeah. let's get going, you know. Huh? Um, That's what it's about. I, I, what I'm trying to hesitate doing is asking the common questions. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter, because I always think a lot of people still haven't heard the answer to that common question, so and I'm also, not against it. You, you can know? answer on many levels, you know what I mean? Well, the common, I guess the most common question would be asked you is how do you feel about the, the, the splitting up of... I think it was a very healthy thing, like a, a, an a, almost an amicable divorce, an amicable... It hasn't been that violent, you know. Court cases don't really involve, uh, you know, us personally. It's usually lawyers sort of bickering in studios, or not in studios, in court. Or whatever. Have you ever been together as, as the four people in recent times outside of court? No, we haven't. Uh, the four of... With, even before the court thing, I mean, there was seldom when four of us would be together. There were usually two or three at the same time. Uh, I mean, I think Ringo saw Paul at Mick's wedding, uh -huh. just for a couple of, you know, half a day or something. But uh, I spent a lot of time with George and Ringo, that's for sure. In fact, there's been a rumor, uh, according to Rolling Stone, that you've been in the studio recording together. No, well, George was uh, doing, playing guitar on my session, uh -huh. you know, when I was doing the new album, so that's what it was. Okay, we've got to take a break because we've got the uh, the network news coming up and then we'll be back and we will go to the phones at that time. Our number is 5418150 and uh, my guests are John Lennon and Yoko Ono and this is WPLJ in New York, which is 95.5 FM stereo. We were talking about, about couples working together. Yeah, I just said, you know, it's saying, great that Alex and his wife is working together. And beautiful, you know. I, I, it's happening a lot, and I think it's healthy. I think it really is, especially, uh, let's say, where, where one person is in the public eye. Because uh, then there's kind of a feeling of uh, both accomplishing something together. And I think yeah. it really helps a marriage. I think since we've done uh, this show together... Uh, our marriage and our togetherness has probably improved well, eight thousand cool. percent. Yeah, it makes you wonder how couples survive. You know, when they, as soon as they get married, uh, they they pulled apart. You know, the husband either goes to work or in the city, and she remains in the suburbs, or he's working in Africa and she's in Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I mean, how can you have a relationship with somebody you only see every now and then? And also, you know, there's some couples that both work. You know, yeah. like actors and actresses. You know, but yeah. uh, one is working in Paris and the other is shooting in uh, L.A. or something. You know, that we don't. You know. I don't think we can do that either, right? No. We don't of course, I think it's up to the individual, too. Some couples can survive like that yeah, and survive yeah. longer that way, and others can't. It doesn't right. surprise me that so many sort of couples split with a divorce or whatever when they live in separate lives. Oh. Well, I think, there's a, I think there's a great danger, too, and it does happen. Uh, somebody becomes famous, uh, and then all of a sudden you hear about the imminent divorce from right. the childhood yeah. sweetheart, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that happens because the childhood sweetheart does stay home right. yeah. Yeah. and well, isn't able to grow. Yeah with the person because obviously when you're thrust in the limelight and all of a sudden you got managers and agents and you're being hustled around yeah, the country your whole lifestyle life. changes right. and you become more sophisticated or whatever yeah. and meanwhile she's sitting home and she's still that childhood sweetheart yeah. and, ha and hasn't been able to adapt to this you until you're saying, two different people you were saying something very beautiful you know about scorpions and all that yeah when i was uh, when i was a kid i every now and then i go to sleep at night and hear a click click under my pillow and there'd be a scorpion there because i lived we lived in a very wet area and my father always used to, as soon as he found one scorpion, would go looking for the other. And, uh -huh. uh, because scorpions always travel together, male and female. Uh -huh. And uh, when one dies off, the other will soon die off after that. Uh -huh. And they, they have that kind of relationship. So I kind of think that we're getting a lot of scorpion couples around, like you and, and yeah, John and, and, and Anita and Abby and yeah. you know, my lady and I. And yes, we think that we're a typical couple of the next stage or whatever, you know, because we're East and West, you know, that mixture is good too, the fact that I think the whole world should mix more and more, you know, yeah. like that helps. 
It does help. Yeah. Let's go to the phones, because there are a lot of people out there that want to ask you some questions, and they'll probably ask better ones than I've been asking. Them. Boy, you guys, you really are belching this yeah. morning, man. Yeah, okay, well... It could be that Pat Boone part. button you're wearing. I feel like throwing up. Go ahead. Do you want to carry on? I'll no, just throw up yeah, yeah, Okay, you have a question for Yoko? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I'm on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, first of all, I saw the, uh, I saw John and Yoko, I saw both of you with the mothers the other night, and I really dug it. Ah, uh, oh, great. How'd you like, I mean, you know, what yeah. did you like about it? Uh, what I like about it? Yeah. Uh, well, I really dug the part when... Oh, uh, you were in the bag, because I could really get into the sounds. <laughs> I really That's could great. get into it. It was really great. Well, I mean, it was a big band and all that, and I was worried if my voice would carry through or not, but did it? Yeah, I can hardly hear you. She wants really? to know. Where were you? <laughs> Where was I? Yeah. <clears throat> No, he, he said he couldn't hear you now. Oh, uh, I see. You know, she yeah. wanted to know if her voice carried into the audience. Oh, right. yeah, sure. It was Did it? Oh, great. It was fantastic. After, after the concert, I was... Yeah. Uh, you say the dream is over in the album. Oh, yeah, that one. And, like, what I want to know is, like, how can I end the dream... Because, like, I am totally flipped into well, the why don't you... other people who I'm friends with do the same, who are, like... Yeah, but you see, the thing is that uh, everything, you know, uh, moves, you know? And uh, if you're growing, you just have to move on, you know? I mean, a dream can be like, you know, your hometown or something. You have to grow out of it and everything. Yeah. And it happens. Yeah, but it's really hard. It's a very healthy situation. And the fact that you were in a stoop, in a dream, was bad, you know, because that means that you were sort of living in an illusion, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's an illusion. I've been living in an unbelievable one because, like, I have, I've gained this reputation of, like, the fifth beetle around in this neighborhood. Huh. And people will come up to me who I don't even know and say, Bob, let it be. You know, it's an yeah. unbelievable thing. Yeah. I don't even, I'm saying, let what be? You know, like, I don't even know. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Well, I think, you know, it just happened naturally, you know. Anything that's not natural just can't sort of happen this way, you yeah. know. Like, uh, uh, people say something about, you know, uh, well, I broke up the Beatles or whatever. But the... Uh, Did you get a little tired of that? Yeah, but, you know, saying? that one I've heard a lot. But, you know, how could you break something that's, you, you know, that's growing and that's going, you know? I mean, I think all the Beatles outgrew themselves, you know, outgrew the group, rather, you know? Yeah. And it was a healthy thing. Look at George. I mean, he's doing well, you know? I don't think he wants to go back to the old days when he was sort of like, uh, yeah. you know, whatever. I keep on, you know... Part of my whole dream thing was like the Beatles one one day gonna be Sergeant Peppers. You know, like yeah. I've been into this thing for about a year now. I keep on thinking, you know, they're gonna be Sergeant Peppers one day. But you know, the point is that's the nice thing. You know how people have scapegoats and people have uh, stars and that. It's because uh, they don't want to face themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you should you should start to look at yourself. You're not that bad. You know, yeah. and look at yourself in the mirror and start thinking about yourself instead of looking at a star because, uh, you know, the reason why people rather watch the star than themselves is because you don't want to face life, you know? Yeah. And that's unhealthy, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you might be the poet, you know, and you have to start sort of get going. Yeah, I just have to go up and do it. Thank yeah. you for calling. Okay, bye, -bye. bye. Thank you. You feeling better, Jim? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Is that the way you start your morning every morning? Just uh, throw up and then the start summons. the day? <laughs> yeah. the right, the summons did it. How did you like, you know, receiving summons? Mm -hmm. Early in the morning. No, I, I think I got up, smoked too many cigarettes, and drank too much tea. Oh, well, they stomach. were very clever to catch us here. Well, I don't know why they didn't just send us to the office. I would have received it. Uh, well, I don't know. I uh, think they provided. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. yes. Hello. yes. Uh, I'd like to ask John a question. Sure. John. Yeah. Um, you were really great. You're, I, oh, I so can't you. believe Thank I'm you. speaking to a myth. A myth? Yeah. Myth you, world or myth universe? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have you heard Ringo Blue single? Uh, it don't come easy. Right. Yeah, of course I've heard it. What do you think of it? I think it's beautiful. I'm really proud of him and happy that he's having such a success with it. I think Ringo's, uh, Ringo's really felt the influence of, of you guys. 
of you and Paul and George. And vice versa, you know. I mean, we all helped each other. I think what's phenomenal is the flip side of that record. Oh, yeah, that that one's a beauty, isn't it? It's and warm, it's beauty. nice. Yeah. It's well, about you. We're yeah. all very pleased, you know. Yeah, Ringo really And he good. produced it himself, wrote yeah. it himself, and it's, right, right. it's delightful. And another question. Mm -hmm. There are there are a few um, groups and people who are uh, sort of imitating the Beatles, like mm -hmm. Emmett Rhodes. Have you ever heard of Emmett Rhodes? Uh, Emmett Rhodes? Right. I've heard the name. I've not heard any of his stuff. He sounds like Paul. Oh, good luck to him, you know. <laughs> you should you, you should listen to him. Maybe if, if, if you want to get together with, <laughs> with the group and Paul and you want to get together. <laughs> no, I don't want to I don't want to recreate the past. Uh, you know, I want to be me now. Oh, I see. Well, you, well I, I just heard... I heard your album recently, and it's a great album. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for calling. Okay, bye. Bye. You know, this guy, just before, you know, yeah. said that he was in the film where East when we performed, you oh, know, yeah. like two days ago. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. He liked it very much. Great. Right. This is WPLJ in New York. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, is that well, I was oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, ah. Jim, just thinking of all the... the, the, uh, the people... I know there are people crowding in the halls and so on, and, uh... He just, of course, threw up in our bathroom. And, uh, yeah, I'm wondering if people are going to relish that bathroom for months I'm now. I'm donating uh, it to the wildlife fund. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's healthy to throw up, yeah. Huh? Right. Huh? Does one good once. <laughs>